Hello and welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students, sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling, better known as IACAC, and StriveScan. I am Robin Mareth. I am the College and Career Admission Specialist at, I said that wrong, Career and College Admission Specialist at Maine South High School in Park Ridge, Illinois, and I welcome you all to our information session with Columbia University. I will remind you that your camera and your microphone are off and they will remain off throughout the entire presentation. If you have questions to ask any of the panelists, please use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Um, but please note that they may wait until the end of the presentation to answer the questions. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the sessions. If you have participated before, welcome back. And if this is your first one, we hope that you will peruse the list of sessions that are going on for the next three weeks um, at the same website that you registered at IACAC.org. If you have to leave for any time or you would like to rewatch this presentation, the recording will be available in about a week, as well as all of the recordings for the sessions that are going on uh, this week and in the weeks to come. So at this time, I'm going to welcome our panelists from Columbia University, and they are welcome to share their screen, and I will be back at the end. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to the Illinois ACAC and for StriveScan for hosting this virtual college exploration fair. My name is Jason Mogan and I'm an assistant director for undergraduate admissions at Columbia University in the city of New York. And before I start with this presentation, I just love for uh, our two students to have the chance to briefly introduce themselves. So Stephanie, do you want to say just a quick hello? Sure. Hi guys, I'm Stephanie. I'm a sophomore now at Columbia College, um, and I'm excited to be here. I'm from uh, Bloomington, Illinois. And hi, I'm Alexis. I'm also a sophomore in Columbia College, and I'm from the Chicagoland area. Thank you to the two of you so much for joining us. Feel free to turn off your uh, microphones and your cameras. We're going to start out with a mini presentation about Columbia, and uh, then we'll end the presentation for a good 30 minutes focus on question and answer. I have a couple of questions prepared, but really we want to get to answer your questions that you have about Columbia for Stephanie and Alexis. Um, to that end, please use the Q&A feature throughout the entire presentation. Our two students will be answering questions behind the scenes throughout in addition to afterwards when we answer them live. Um, but with that, let's get started with the presentation. So if we were doing this in person, what I'd usually like to do is break out my presentation into two sections. And the first one is going to be information that's important to know about Columbia University that might not be unique to Columbia, giving you that foundation of who we are, but maybe not those distinguishing features yet. So let's start with academics. For starters, we are a major uh, research university, and within that we house a small liberal arts college and a small engineering school. Uh, and so in Columbia College, you have the liberal arts. We feature the arts, humanities, social sciences, languages and cultures, and natural sciences, and you can choose from over 80 different areas of study. And in Columbia Engineering, you focus on engineering in particular, and there's 16 different majors that you can choose from. It's all the same campus and residence halls and student groups. The distinction is what you ultimately want to major in, and you need to have an idea of whether or not you're interested in engineering or the liberal arts when you apply to Columbia. Uh, we maintain small classroom sizes and prioritize small discussion-based coursework. 80% of classes are 22 students or fewer. If a class has 30 students or more, it's deemed a lecture class. Uh, and all lectures are required to have breakout recitation or discussion sections where you maintain that small classroom environment and review the lecture uh, presentation. Uh, in terms of student to faculty ratio, we have a six to one student to faculty ratio on average. It's seven to one in the engineering school. Faculty members are teaching undergraduates. They're required to host office hours if they're teaching a course. And so faculty members are very accessible for our students, even amidst paving the way in their respective fields. And undergraduates absolutely have access to research opportunities. In order to get involved in research, all you need to do is reach out to a faculty member, whether you've taken their class or maybe it's someone you haven't even met before. 
shoot them an email and tell them why you're interested or attend a departmental information session or open house. We even have research fairs at the beginning of the year for students to learn about undergraduate opportunities. There's so much funding uh, for students who are interested in research, whether it's from departments or from the university at large or through financial aid. And so we want students to know that part of that academic experience is research. Now, another feature about Columbia that's important to know, but might not distinguish us from other schools you're looking at, is that we have a lot of student organizations. In fact, we have more than 500 that you can choose from. 100 of those are dedicated to the performing arts, from amateur to conservatory level. We have 31 NCAA Division I sports, and we have club sports, intramural sports. We have cultural affinity groups, political organizations, academic organizations. Community Impact at Columbia University houses 23 civic engagement groups focused on our neighboring communities. Uh, and so really you can find just about anything that meets your own interests. And like many other schools, if there's a club that you're interested in creating or you can't find a club for your interest, you are welcome to start one on Columbia's campus as well. So that concludes the things that might not be distinct about Columbia, but still important to know. The next section is things about Columbia that are very unique to us. Uh, I like to start with the student body. Um, students are coming from all around the world in all walks of life. There are 6,000 undergraduates between Columbia College and Columbia Engineering. They come from all 50 states, more than 90 countries, 20% of students identify as having an international background. More than 50% of students identify as students of color, more than 50% receive financial aid and 18% of students receive Pell Grants as part of their financial aid. About 18% of students are the first in their family to go to college, and we have 40 tribal affiliations represented on campus. And that is all just to say that you're really never going to meet the same person twice when you come to Columbia, especially when you overlay all of the different academic interests that students bring with them when they come to our campus. This is critical about a Columbia education because of our foundational general education requirement, and that is the core curriculum. The core curriculum is a set of very specifically named classes and requirements that every student is expected to take no matter what major they ultimately decide to pursue. The core classes are grounded in studying primary sources so that students can evaluate texts, music, art, and science and come to form their own opinions about these works. It's grounded in small discussion-based coursework. So students are bringing forth their opinions and having conversations with their peers. And at the same time, they're listening to their colleagues in the classroom. They're challenging their worldview. They're critiquing their own values and beliefs because they hear how other students from different academic backgrounds and different worldviews approach the same texts and the same music and the same art. So we're trying to develop citizens who are critical of the way society exists and are challenging the way things exist to make the world a better place. Um, the core curriculum has courses in literature, philosophy, music, art, science, and writing that are named. There are also requirements where you pick the courses in uh, science, foreign language, global studies, and physical education. It sounds like a significant number of courses and coursework. For Columbia College students, it only amounts to about a third of a student's education. Uh, and it's spread out over all four years. So even in your first year, you have the opportunity to take elective courses in addition to those core curriculum courses. For Columbia engineers, it's about a fourth of their education. There are reduced requirements for the core because engineers need to take technical requirements like chemistry, calculus, physics, computer science, economics, and a course called the Art of Engineering that offers hands-on engineering experience as early as a student's first year. So they're still engaging in the core curriculum but in addition to that, having that foundational STEM education. In all of these courses, you're not being asked to uh, perform rote memorization or to remember just where a passage is from in a particular book and who wrote it. The goal is to ask big picture questions that delve into the human conditions so that you can understand your own individuality, your own citizenship, and understand your responsibility to society at large and how to live in a peaceful and productive life. And so when you think about the core curriculum, don't just think about it in that classroom setting, think about having these broad conversations that are thematic with your peers, even outside of that 20 person conversation in a classroom, in dining halls and on the steps of the library. Uh, whether you're first year taking literature humanities or you're an upper class and you took the course and you're continuing conversations around these same themes, the core brings you together. 
In fact, the core curriculum turned 100 years old last year in 2019. And so there are decades of alumni who have gone through the core curriculum and have read many of the same texts as students currently in core curriculum classes. And so that means that you have a connection to one another through these courses, through the texts that you read and the music you listen to and the art that you interpret and view. And so the core is central to a Columbia education. It's really a defining feature of what it means to be a Columbian. Another unique feature of Columbia University is the fact that we are located in New York City, but we have a central open air campus. It's actually the second largest open space in Manhattan, and there are actual green fields on Columbia's campus. And that's unique to have the hustle and bustle of New York City and that sleepy college town feel on campus. We are located in Manhattan, as you can see in this map in the top right hand corner. Manhattan means the island of many hills, the language of the Lenni Lenape people. Uh, it is the ancestral and traditional homeland of the Lenni Lenape and Wappinger people who are still active members of our communities in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania today. And so looking at that campus experience at Columbia, it's going to feel like that sleepy college town. It's a slower pace. It's a little quieter. And it's very residential. Half of our faculty members live in the area. You have 6,000 undergraduates living here. Students are guaranteed housing all four years and 95% of students choose to stay in campus housing all four years. In fact, as a first year under normal circumstances, first years are required to live in campus housing. So it's really a living and learning experience. And we have so many collegiate traditions like the homecoming football game. We have a holiday tree lighting ceremony where we light up these big trees right here in this image on College Walk right before finals happen. We have a musical that's completely student run and produced that is set to make fun of the Columbia administration each year uh, called the Varsity Show. It's over 125 years old. And so you'll find all of those traditions that really help students feel that Columbia spirit and that connectedness and that togetherness. Um, and all that happens right on campus. Columbia will also ensure that you have the ability to explore New York City. And we'll do everything we can to make it accessible and affordable for you. We have our own subway stop. So you leave campus gates and the 116 stop is right there. It costs $2.75 to swipe your Metro card. It's only a 15 minute subway ride to get to Times Square. We will give you access to discounted Broadway shows and concerts and performances at Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall, even good old fashioned movies. We'll send out a weekly newsletter through the Columbia University Arts Initiative so you can learn about all of the artistic and cultural experiences from that indie to established uh, perspective throughout New York City. Uh, and we even have a lottery called Urban New York where students can take advantage of any one of these arts and culture experiences for free. So we want to ensure that students feel like they can actually get out there and take advantage of New York. In fact, most students will ultimately not have classes on Fridays during some semester on campus. This means that students have more time to go out and take advantage of New York, whether that's exploring any of these arts and cultural opportunities or taking advantage of job and internship opportunities. We have a database of more than 77,000 job and internships uh, and more than 95% of students have at least one job or internship by the time they graduate. And a lot of that has to do with being located in New York City, has to do with having the time to have a full day that you can devote to a job or internship opportunity. And students are set up for success when they graduate. The median starting salary is $70,000 and more than 90% of students know what they're doing upon graduation from Columbia. Now the final distinct piece about Columbia is our financial aid. It is incredibly generous. Um, our financial aid is need blind and need based. When we calculate our financial aid, it is not based on merit. It is based on what your family can reasonably afford for Columbia education using the FAFSA form, the CSS profile, and tax information. We'll deduct what we think your family can reasonably afford for college from the total cost of attendance at Columbia, and that will show us your demonstrated need, how much money you need to afford a Columbia education. Uh, we will meet the entirety of that number, 100% of your demonstrated need with federal grants, with Columbia grants, which is free money from Columbia, and with work study. Students are not expected to take out loans as part of their financial aid. In fact, if a family is making $60,000 or less annually, parents are expected to contribute $0 towards their child's education. 
We give out a lot of money for financial aid. Uh, last year, we gave out over $174 million in aid. The average financial aid package was more than $55,000 per student. And uh, students are coming from the entire spectrum of socioeconomic status. 18% of students receive Pell Grants as part of their financial aid. So if you're thinking, what does affordability look like for me and my family? please go to our financial aid website, use our cost estimators. One of them is called My Intuition, which is very quick to fill out. Another is called the Net Price Calculator, which is very uh, expansive and requires specific information. And then you can have an understanding of what aid would look like for you and your family from Columbia in particular. So to close out the presentation portion of this session, I wanna wrap up with some general admissions, dates and deadlines and information. Uh, if you're considering applying to Columbia, you can apply through the Common Application or the Coalition Application. We don't have a preference. We encourage you to use whichever application your counselor can best support you with. We are an early decision school. If you absolutely love Columbia more than any other school that you are looking at, consider applying early decision. It is a binding program, so if you're admitted early, you must come to Columbia after being admitted. You hear back from us with that decision earlier in mid-December. If you are loving Columbia, but you're not quite ready to make that kind of commitment, take a look at our regular decision deadline. That's January 1st. You'll hear back from us in late March. And that way you have the opportunity to make a decision about what school you'd like to attend. Um, when we review your applications, we review them holistically, contextually, and individually. Holistic admissions means that there's no one part of your application that's the reason why you're admitted to or denied from Columbia. We need to look at every piece of your application to build a narrative of who you are as a student, as a community member, and how that would play out at Columbia in particular. You provide biographical information, your GPA and your transcript and letters of recommendation, activities lists, uh, a personal statement, and even answer questions that the Columbia Admissions Office has designed that we think really speaks to that idea of fit. Is this a place that you will grow and thrive most? And can we contribute back to your education as well? All of that comes together to tell us your story in regard to Columbia Admissions. Now, when I say we review applications contextually, it means that we understand that not every student has the same educational experiences or access to resources and opportunities. And so we take into account uh, where you are from, what school you attend, what your life is like, um, what circumstances are happening in the world. For example, we understand that COVID is going to impact your application. And so we know that your activities list might not look the same for your junior and senior year of high school if you're applying this year, that your GPA might actually look a little different and that your school may have chosen to do grades differently in the spring semester of junior year if you're applying this year. And so it's our responsibility to understand the context of your application in addition to evaluating the materials you present to us. And the final piece is that there is an individual review of your application. It means that at no point in this process are you being compared to another student applying to Columbia. It doesn't matter if you attend the same school, if you're interested in the same majors, if you're from the same state, you get your own individualized review because you have your own interest in Columbia, your own academic passions, your own educational journey. And so this decision is solely made based on the materials that you provide to us. It's individual. So with that, um, I'm going to bring back Alexis and Stephanie um, and they can turn their cameras back on. Uh, I have a couple of questions prepared for them. Um, before I start asking them, I just want to point out this contact information here. I am your regional admissions officer for Illinois, so you can email me directly if you have any questions and you can't find the answers on our website. If you want a student's perspective and we couldn't get to your question today, email askastudentatcolumbia.edu and we have students on standby asking, answering questions that you have. If it's a general admissions question, you have ugrad-ask. If you have a financial aid question, you have ugrad-finaid at columbia.edu. Please don't hesitate to use any of these email addresses. All right, I feel like I've spoken enough. So uh, Alexis, Stephanie, why don't we redo introductions and feel free to expand a little more. Tell us where you're from, what you're intending on majoring in, uh, things that you've done at Columbia since you started as a student. Um, Stephanie, do you wanna get us started with this? Sure. So hi guys. Again, I'm Stephanie and um, things that I've been involved in on campus include Bacchanal, which is our yearly music festival, uh, WKCR, our radio station, 
The Gadfly, our philosophical magazine, um, along with uh, Young Storytellers, a volunteer organization that works with uh, youth in the greater Harlem community. Hi, I'm Alexis. I am, as I said, a sophomore in CC. I'm at Columbia College. I'm thinking about majoring in Middle Eastern Studies and Political Science. And on campus, I am involved in the Journal of Politics and Society, where we edit and publish social science research. Um, I'm in a dance group. I'm in a affinity group for Black women. And I'm a tour guide. Amazing. So. Like I said, I have a couple of questions prepared for you. I also want to encourage students that are uh, listening in and watching today, please send in your questions for Alexis and Stephanie that you have. Um, it is a treat to have them here and they would love to share their experiences with you. Um, but to get us started, Alexis, um, let's start with you. What drew you to apply to Columbia and ultimately choose Columbia? So when I was looking at schools, I knew that I wanted to be in a very urban environment. And so that immediately drew me to Columbia. Um, I mean, obviously, it's in like the biggest city in the country. It doesn't get, get much better than New York City. Um, so that was one of the first reasons. And then as I started to do more research, I really loved the idea of the core curriculum, that it's something that everyone um, in Columbia College is doing, that it opens your eyes to basically how to be like a global citizen. I just found that concept really fascinating. Um, so those were some of the main reasons why I applied. And then along with those reasons why I ended up coming to Columbia, um, I think the last facet mainly was the people that I met when I came to visit um, on Admitted Students Weekend. There's just like nothing like the Columbia community. Um, everyone is really passionate in what they're doing um, and has so many interests even outside of their major or their course of study at Columbia. Um, and I saw how interested people were in like the core curriculum in New York City as a whole. Um, there are other courses of study, clubs on campus. So people are just really passionate and excited to be there genuinely. So that's why I chose to come. Stephanie, how about you? Well, um, a lot of reasons as well. I wanted to be somewhere urban because um, I wanted a change of pace. Central Illinois is a little bit sleepy and I wanted access to opportunities related to music, humanities, um, and professional opportunities. I think um, the just the breadth and depth of resources in any professional field in New York is, is really astounding. Um, and I forgot to mention, I'm studying philosophy with a concentration in either history or jazz studies. And um, musically being in New York City, which is the, the capital of jazz essentially, has been really amazing for me, not only as a student, but as a musician. And I wanted to be somewhere where I could really unite both my interests in academics, philosophy, um, which aligns a lot with the core curriculum and my extracurricular interest in music, um, which I've been able to really, really um, interweave by taking classes in jazz and literature or going to speaker series and concerts in the city um, and really see where culture and um, the things that I'm studying interface. So those are my main reasons. Cool, thank you both. Um, and so another question that I wanna ask is about the transition to Columbia. How was the transition from Illinois to New York City, Chicago to New York City? Um, and was there anything specific at Columbia that helped you with that transition? Um, Stephanie, do you wanna take this one first? Uh, sure. So coming to New York City was really different from where I grew up, uh, clearly. Um, but I think the one thing that really helped first was Columbia's campus. Um, like you said, it's open air, there's greenery, there's lawn, there's space. And the Morningside Heights area is very college town-esque. Um, it feels very comfortable. And when you're walking around the Columbia campus, you're always running into people you see, other students. It doesn't feel like you're just thrown out to the city to fend for yourself, um, which is something I really appreciated in making that transition. Um, and then of course, the biggest thing I think though was just finding my, my kind of people, um, finding people who helped me create a sense of community um, on campus through extracurriculars, through clubs and through pre-orientation and classes. Alexis, wanna share? 
Yeah, um, I really agree with everything that Stephanie just said, especially about the campus feeling kind of like a smaller like sanctuary um, on Manhattan and that like you can see people that you know all the time. Um, meeting people also from the Illinois area was really helpful for me and like connecting with them before I came to campus, just because you already know you have something in common. Um, and then I think also just the way that Columbia makes the city really accessible to its students made it seem like it wasn't like a daunting new place that I had to learn about. Um, I was really able to just like take it a step at a time and explore the city in my own way while having like all the resources there for me. Thank you. Um, so I kind of, there are a lot of great questions that are coming in. So I know I have one more question prepared for you, but I kind of want to move into some of these questions that students are asking. I hope that's okay. Um, and so both of you have mentioned New York City a lot. And so, and students are asking about it. And so I was wondering if uh, one of you could share what your favorite part is about studying in New York City, if you have an experience with that. Um, I can definitely speak to that. So like I said, I'm a philosophy major. Um, and although you might not automatically associate New York City with philosophy, uh, the fact is that New York City is, is a hub of, of culture and um, influx of information constantly. And so um, there's always really cool lectures going on, but I discovered this thing that's held at um, the Brooklyn Public Library and it's called the Night of Philosophy. And it's just this, this entire 24 hour straight of, of speakers and, and events and even musicians. And it's really more just like a place where people are exchanging like cool and interesting ideas. There was like um, a dance troupe and stuff like that. But after class on like a Friday night, uh, I just took the subway down to Brooklyn and I had just got out of my like, um, modern philosophy class and then I came here and I saw one of my professors speaking at um at the public library at like 2 a.m because that's how long this this event went and it was really awesome just to be able to find uh, a community of people interested in things that I'm interested in outside of the the college bubble and to really see kind of the impact that the ideas that you're looking at in the context of school and in campus really at play in the real world. Cool. Um, another question that came up is, uh, there are several questions, honestly, about the core curriculum. Um, and so one of them, first of all, a student wants to know about kind of balance and the core curriculum. How does it actually feel as a student? Do you have flexibility? Do you have the ability to take elective classes? Um, this student really wants to know if you have room to not only do the core curriculum. Yeah, I could speak about this. Um, I'd say definitely yes. I honestly, like similar to what the student I think is asking was kind of concerned that I wouldn't have enough time to explore my first year to kind of figure out what I wanted to pursue. Um, but I will say that I definitely had more than enough room to like explore. I didn't discover that I wanted to do my major until about this semester. So a lot of the classes that I took last year might not even be counted for my major that I'm gonna end up doing, which is totally fine. I still have more than enough time to go through the rest of my courses, course of study and the core without having to worry about like finishing in time or anything. Um, and honestly, the core really enhanced what I was learning in my other classes. So I enjoyed it anyway, um, but it's not as big of a commitment as you would think. And you definitely have time to like explore and look around and take elective classes and stuff. Thank you. Um... Another student wants to know, I think speaking to the academic experience, would you describe Columbia's environment as more collaborative or competitive? Um, in my experience, it's been really collaborative. I think that's one thing that actually comes um, kind of entailed in, in the core curriculum because you're constantly in these sort of small seminar environments um, and you're encouraged to discuss and exchange your thoughts and, and also take all thoughts um, without reservations and give people sort of a um, charity of interpretation. It's always been really rewarding to just like work together with other students on a lit hum, you know, on, on studying for lit hum essay or lit hum tests or see what other people are learning in their classes. I think there's a lot of exchange of ideas because of the core curriculum and also because of the, the wide breadth of things that people are studying that it really encourages you to just um, form a community of learning.
You're muted, Jason. I think you're muted. Jason. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Um, so there were a couple of questions about admissions and one student asked, what are the most common mistakes that you see in the admissions process? And then another student asked, what's the most important thing to keep in mind when applying to Columbia? And I think that they're, they really meet at the same answer. And so one is to be as authentic as possible when you're applying to colleges. I think a lot of students get caught up in trying to have the most interesting story or the most unique story or the funniest story or the saddest story when they're writing their essays, but really all we're looking for is your voice and your approach to life and um, really kind of like your humanity in your application. And so allow for that feeling of authenticity to speak through your entire application. And then when you're applying to any school, especially when they have the supplemental questions, um, take a look at those questions and spend time with them and be thoughtful about them and make sure that you've done your research and understand why are you interested in applying to Columbia University and that you found a connection to the school. And Alexis and Stephanie shared great answers about why they were interested in applying to Columbia and that came through in their application. Uh, and so you have your own reasons, but be able to show us that with specificity. Um, that way we know that you're actually interested in Columbia in particular. So that would be my two pieces of advice there. Um, moving to a kind of fun question here. Um, one student asked, what is one thing about Columbia that makes you excited to wake up in the morning? I can go. I honestly feel like it's like seeing my friends around campus and like knowing that like I can go to the dining hall and like someone I know will be there. Um, and because it, I guess relatively is, I'm, I mean, it's not a small school, but on the smaller side, like you're always, you always know someone you can walk into like any of the dining halls and know someone. Um, and also I really enjoyed like the living environment last year and just like knowing getting to my floor and like seeing all of those people. So I know I talk a lot about the people at Columbia, but it really is um, what makes me excited. Amazing. Um, you know, I, I actually want to expound on that and maybe return back to the question that I had asked of you beforehand about finding community and how did you find your community or how did you find your people um, especially coming from halfway across the country to Columbia. Well, I um, started out when I got to Columbia, I was doing a pre-orientation program before um, the regular orientation program and mine was Q, Columbia Urban Experience, um, in which we all spent a week volunteering at a, a specific charity within the city and also um, taking time to kind of immerse ourselves in, in Manhattan and just get used to the city. Um, and that was really helpful for me since I was coming from a very non-urban environment. Um, and I found um, found like many of my best friends in that program. I'm actually living with one of them now. Um, and along with that, I think, um, once again, you know, we keep harping on the core curriculum, but in my Lit Hum class, because you're just kind of thrown into a group of 20 kids um, and you're just asked to just talk, basically. It's a very social experience. So in classes, small seminar classes like that, I found a lot of friends and finally just in in exploring my own interest uh, my interest in music I found a lot of people at like Bacchanal or CU Records and you know just ended up jamming with them or playing or collaborating and I think if you follow your interests you'll find people who are like-minded and as well as meeting people who are really different too Alexis do you want to add to that Sure. Um, I definitely, I also did a pre-orientation program. I did the outdoor one. Um, and similar to what Stephanie said, I definitely found some of my closest friends there in the group, but you also have like older students who are taking you on the trip and they were so helpful in my first few months at Columbia. And even now I still am in touch with those people regularly. Um, so being in like an environment where you're with these like 18 people for four days straight, you really get to know them and it kind of feels like your family coming in to orientation, which can honestly sometimes feel a little bit daunting meeting so many new people. Um, so I recommend that if you can do a pre-orientation program, um, but also similar to what Stephanie was saying, um, definitely through my like club 
clubs and organizations, I found so many people that I got along with, like my dance group, just like people that have similar interests, you're bound to at least have like one thing in common and get to know them. Um, and I also feel like in general, at people at Columbia are just kind of like introducing people to you all the time. So you can kind of just like meet random people that you get along with really well, um, especially because our dorm style living is really compact. Like I think like 500 students lived in my building freshman year. And so there's just so many people to me and you will get along with them. Um, so yeah. That's honestly a perfect segue. A student asked under normal circumstances, what is dorm life like? Uh, I love dorm life. Uh, my freshman year I was in Carmen and it's so nice. They were, they were renovated pretty recently, but uh, all the dorms honestly are great, uh, at least the freshman ones that I've experienced. Um, Carmen is suite style, so I lived with, um, I lived in a larger suite. It was about six girls and we had um, two semi-private bathrooms. Um, and I think the, the greatest thing though about the dorm life besides just the, the the nice rooms and living situation is um, the kind of communal environment that it creates. Um, I can't tell you how many times that I've been like, okay, I want to study, but I kind of need help on something that I'm working on. So I'm just going to like go to John Jay lounge and sit there until I find one of my friends and we can like work out this piece set together or something. Or if I just want to like find somebody and decompress after a long day, I'll just go downstairs to like the Carmen lounge or I'll just run into somebody on the stairwell. I think, the freshman living experience is really wonderful because it just clusters everybody together um, in a way that encourages um, just a very communal environment. Cool. I want to address a question. A student asked what the art of engineering requirement looks like, and I know that you're both in Columbia College, so I want to speak to the engineering perspective here. Um, the art of engineering takes a multi-pronged approach to that introductory engineering experience. So you are doing actual design and learning design principles. You are doing project management with a small group of peers, usually on something small like creating a video game or a robot. Um, you learn MATLAB skills and then you learn about engineering for humanity in this class where uh, individuals who are not necessarily engineers speak to our engineering class about how their work impacts their lives. Um, and so you could hear from like a chef and they'll talk about the knives that they use in their restaurant and explain how engineering principles were used to create knives that are most beneficial to them. Um, and so it's really is that introductory approach to engineering. Um, in addition to this, you get introduced to all of the different departments that Columbia has in engineering, so you can have a better understanding of the type of work that each department does, and you can determine which area of engineering you might like to go into, because you don't declare your major at Columbia as an engineer until your sophomore fall, and for uh, Columbia College students, it's for sophomore spring. All right, um, let's see. And also just another engineering question. Another student asked about the size of the school. So in each year for Columbia College, it's about 1,100 students. For our engineering school, it's about 400 to 500 students. Um, let's see, taking a look at some more of these questions. Um, mm -hmm. All right. What, what would you say is the biggest misconception about Columbia now that you're students? And maybe another way to frame that for you, just in case this helps, is is there something about Columbia that you thought when you applied that ended up not um, meeting that expectation um, or being true when you ended up being a student? Maybe that helps answer that a little bit. Um, I have one actually i definitely thought that the core was going to be like some scary big thing and that it was really going to stress me out and i think with like any college experience people are always worried about stress um but especially at columbia i heard that people are just like super stressed out blah 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 um and that the core is super hard but i found that to be completely the opposite honestly um and that your professors and the people around you are there to help you instead of make things harder on you um and so i think in general like yes it's still school it's still going to be hard sometimes but it was much less overwhelming than i thought it was going to be You are providing me with these great segues. Uh, another student 
asked, um, how helpful did you find your advisor? So the student asked, how helpful did you find your freshman year advisor? But at Columbia, your advisor stays with you all four years. Um, and so students uh, have to meet with their advisor before they start classes in their first year, but you will meet with them on many of the milestones throughout your career. So have the two of you take advantage of the Center for Student Advising? Have you found it helpful? Are there any experiences that you want to share? Yeah, I've found my advisor uh, really helpful. She's wonderful. Um, and one thing that's that's nice about Columbia Advisors too is that you, there's no sort of strict rule and you have to meet your advisor every two weeks or something like that. So you can just schedule an appointment real quick at Barrick and go in basically by, by when you need or when you feel like you need advice. Uh, and that flexibility I really appreciated. But also I think one thing that just in any college, it's it's really good to build a relationship with your advisor because I mean they have a wealth of experiences just from being a student and um, sometimes an educator or just somebody who worked in the real world for a while and um, a great example of this is one of my friends was talking to her advisor and she was really worried about summer opportunities and trying to like combine her interest in politics political science and film and her advisor was like oh well one of my friends does this film festival in Vienna and she specializes in political theater you she should meet her like next month she's going to be visiting the city and so she set up that appointment um and my friend got an internship out of it so i think it's it's really great to have a relationship with your advisor and they can be a wealth of information but not not just in the school and traditional sense but as a mentor too I just want to add because the student asked as part of their question about mental health resources and they are readily available at Columbia. We have counseling and psychological services, which has over 50 different counselors hired with diversity in mind in case any identity factors may be affecting stressors that you experience or bring to campus. Uh, additionally, I, I cannot stress this resource enough. It's called Live Well, Learn Well, and it aggregates every single uh, support service that Columbia has, whether it's academic, psychological services, physical health related, community related, all into one place. It's searchable, filterable, and it provides brief descriptions that you can see just in one place. If you need something that you can find it right on this one website. So if you're curious about what kind of support Columbia offers, that is absolutely something to check out. Um, I want to ask another question of the two of you about the Columbia community vibe. Um, would you say that there is something that would define a Columbia student that you see amongst all of your peers? I know I said in the presentation that everyone's coming from all different backgrounds and walks of life and studying all different sorts of things, but is there something that you feel connects you or is similar? I think I kind of touched on this before, but kind of the idea that everyone is just super passionate and honestly, like a very interesting person, like they just have like so many things going on, but in the best way possible. And so like, like, even if you're in the engineering school and I'm in Columbia College, I see that you're really interested in like financial engineering can like learn that from you. Like, no one is here just to like, I don't know, like not care about what they're studying. Um, and so I think that would be the main thing. Alexis, I think you had alluded to being in a student organization. Um, I think you said for black women and a student asked about resources and cultural organizations that are available for underrepresented minorities at Columbia. Um, would you mind talking about that club that you're a part of um, with your experience in it? Yeah, so the club I'm in, it's called Barnard Organization of Souls and Solidarity, and it's basically a club for black women and like gender nonconforming folks um, to just talk about what it is to be a black person on this campus and I know for a lot of people who are a part of minority groups that can be a concern but I've definitely found that those groups like affinity groups in general are all over Columbia's campus um, no matter what identity you're looking for um, there's many avenues and like even like faculty members to help with that um, I think there's a multicultural affairs office that specializes in um, finding like opportunities for students of minority groups to be in a safe environment that is like helpful for them. So it's been great. Thank you. Um, I, I will add, so 
the Office of Multicultural Affairs hosts uh, family tree programs where students that have a shared identity can come together to talk about their experiences at Columbia. Their advisors, who their full-time job is to support underrepresented and under-resourced students at Columbia that you can speak with. Um, there are programs and collections of resources like LGBTQ at Columbia, International at Columbia, and advisory groups that also advocate for students that come from these backgrounds as well. Um, I see that we're out of time. Uh, Alexis, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us for the session and sharing your perspectives. And for the students, I know there's so many questions that we didn't get to, but uh, I hope you wrote down those email addresses and we'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Great, thank you so much to Jason, Alexis, and Stephanie. Um, when I end this survey, or excuse me, when I end this presentation, there will be a quick survey that pops up just for questions. We ask that you take that so we can enhance our future programming. Don't forget that there are a multiple, multiple sessions still available within this wonderful virtual uh, exploration event and the recording will be available in about a week's time. So check back on the IACAC website for that. So on behalf of IACAC and StriveScan, thank you for attending the Columbia University Information Session and Student Panel. Have a wonderful evening.